Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, yeah, hi everyone. Really happy to be here. I'm Pedro Ferreira. I'm a um, software engineer at CERN. And um, I'll be uh, talking to you about, about Indico together with, with Dom, hey. who's going to do the second half of the presentation. So, hey, it's, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. It's our first time at FOSDEM, and it's really nice to see, uh, you know, such interest. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, as the title of the talk says, we'll be talking about Indico. It's an event management system, as you may have realized by now. Um, and um, it's, um, well, as m all of the things that are being presented here today, a uh, collaborative effort, an open source project under the MIT, MIT license. Uh, it's developed uh, at CERN mainly with contributions from the United Nations and uh, the Max Planck Institute for Physics. And it counts with contributions from more than 70 uh, developers uh, over the last uh, more or less 20 years. So... Indico is probably the most popular uh, event management system you have never heard about. <laughs> There's um, something like 300 servers around the world, most belonging to um, uh, educational, research, um, scientific uh, institutions, serving more than 350,000 users. Um, so it's a tool that you, uh, yeah, as I said, it, it, started, uh, it started out in kind of the research world, um, since, you know, as you know, CERN is a, is, a, is a research laboratory, but then kind of spread out to, to, to different um, uh, environments, and uh, there are, yeah, a few examples of uh, uh, organizations from, from different domains that are already using it. So a little bit of history, starting in 1999, uh, the, the, the physicists working at the Large Hadron Collider, which back then still didn't exist. They were still uh, sort of projecting it, uh, building it. Um, they, they, they needed some sort of application which they could use to, to manage their, their meetings. So um, what would normally happen is that you'd, you'd, you'd have a meeting, you'd exchange a few emails with, uh, with your slides and so on, and then this would get kind of lost at some point because, uh, you know, it would be kind of spread around a few mailbox of different people and, and, and disks and so on. So... Uh, they wanted to have an application which they could use to, as, as like a focal point for, for, for this sort of uh, event and, and as kind of an archival platform as well. So in, in, um, the, this was the first attempt at it. It was a CDS agenda back then. Then, it, then in 2002, the opportunity came up with a European project which was focused on um, having a conferencing platform. So they kind of put the two ideas together and uh, then that, that, that's when Indico was born. Um, it went into production in 2004. In 2007, we've added a, a room booking system to it. Um, then in 2008, a, a full interface overhaul. Um, and then 2013, first workshop. Um, it starts, you know, word of mouth starts uh, spreading. And the, in 2015, the United Nations uh, adopted it. And we started a really nice, fruitful collaboration, which goes on to this day. Um, 2017, um, we did a full rewrite of the of the application. We were working on a pretty, you know, on an aging software stack. Uh, we changed even database system, moved to Postgres. Um, so that was 2017, and 2021. Then we moved to Python to, to Python 3 with Indico 3.0. Um, 2023, last year, we surpassed the 1 million events only at CERN. Um, and 2024, so this year we celebrate our 20th an, um, anniversary. So you may have heard about CERN, um, and the, the big um, tunnel uh, which we have underground, the LHC. You probably heard about uh, the detectors and all the things that go, you know, that, that happen uh, 100 and so meters uh, underground. But uh, a less uh, known facet of, of, the, of the organization, well, maybe not for you because uh, you're all tech people, uh, is that uh, the, the World Wide Web was invented by Tim Berners-Lee at, at the organization back then in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and um, CERN is actually uh, um, producing a lot of open source, also using it, but, but uh, really uh, producing a net contributor to, to, uh, to society when it comes to, to, to open source production. 
So open science is really at the core of our mission. And uh, we have a series of software products which, uh, you know, to this day um, are used around the world and which are uh, developed mostly in the organization and then with collaboration of, of, of several labs. So that's uh, Invenio, Zenodo, there's also Root, White Rabbit, a few other things. Um, there's also the CERN Open Hardware License, which, um, uh, which uh, yeah, goes on to show how the laboratory was a bit of a pioneer in, in this whole open hardware movement. And like last year, we also set up our own uh, open source program office. And yeah, as I said, we're also using a lot of, of, of open source uh, software. Many of, uh, of these projects are represented today uh, here in, in, the, in, the, in the stands. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, thanks everyone for, uh, for also for, for your help. Uh, a little bit of publicity. There are three other talks from uh, from CERN in the in, in this conference. So if you're interested in you know in storage or research data ma management with with RDM, you guys are uh, uh, invited to to pop by. So yeah, coming back to CERN, we we have around 17,000 people on campus at any time, around 230 meeting rooms, um, organizing more than 100,000 events a year between meetings, lectures, conferences, all sort of stuff. Uh, and many of these meetings are highly distributed. So, uh, yeah, when, when, when you come up with Indico, the objective was actually to, 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 to solve this problem. How do we get, you know, super big collaborations of thousands of physicists to work together in a distributed environment? And, um, you know, uh, how, how do we conciliate that with the, 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 the organization's also um, uh, physical presence? So this is, yeah, this is a science gateway. It's a pretty recent addition to the, to the laboratory. It's a super fancy project by uh, the same architect who responsible for, uh, was responsible for the Georges Pompidou uh, Center in, uh, in Paris. Um, but yeah, just a disclaimer, we don't work in this building. We obviously work in the Brutalist uh, buildings back there, uh, uh, where's the IT department. So, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, you, you should really visit it. Really nice place. So at CERN, uh, Indico became um, quite, uh, quite popular very quickly. Uh, we've been growing year after year. This is the number of new events per year, so uh, we're still kind of accelerating. Um, and uh, these are just examples of a few events, a few meetings, uh, conferences that uh, uh, we're currently hosting at CERN's um, Indico server. Uh, there are basically two types of events. There's the conferences, which are a sort of, um, you know, the more traditional workflow where you have a call for abstracts, uh, paper reviewing. You have um, uh, workflows which allow people then to interact, uh, do, do the, you know, the reviewing of papers, uh, refereeing, and so on. And then there's uh, um, meetings, which... Um, are more uh, a bit of a simplified view in which you can upload, you know, your slides and share it with other people, and you have a common shared uh, schedule. And now I'll switch over to Dom. All right. Um, people call me Dominic or Dom. I don't really care. So um, this is Roomba King. It's a module which is part of Indico. Um, as you can see by this nice screenshot, you've got the. Um, leaflet-based map on the right, which shows you rooms. On the left, you've got a timeline of, you know, the rooms which have been uh, booked. Very, very, very simple stuff. But um, it's, not, it's not just that. Um, so we're going to go into the uh, technical aspect of uh, Indico. So at its core, it's very, very general purpose. So <coughs> just because we use it at CERN to handle our conferences, conferences and meetings, um, and also everything else um, is very, very. Um, it's not set in stone with, 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 you know, what you can use it for. It's you can use it for almost anything, pretty much. Well, in that realm, anyway. Um, you can also through uh, plugins as well, and also you can customize it with, you know, standard CSS or what have you. So. Under the hood, yes, it is a Python application, uh, specifically a uh, Flask-based. Um, so that handles our backend um, for the database, uh, Postgres SQL. Um, I believe they have a booth here. Then we have um, 
other stuff as well, such as uh, Celery, which is handling our, pre our tasks as well, and uh, SQL Alchemy, which is essentially the uh, ORM for uh, Postgres. And again, that is a uh, Python based. React, also that's for the UI, well, the front end, we could say, and a uh, semantic UI, which is just the uh, styling of this. And we've got a lot more services on top. Okay, so um, as I said, plugins, extensions, so yes, Indico has them. You might be interested. So um, yeah, these are just a couple of our plugins. I'll get into a lot more. But yeah, video conferencing, payments, conversions to PDF, um, search via Elasticsearch, um, storage, and uh, URL shortening, and you know a lot more stuff which we can, which Indigo handles under the hoods for CERN. So, for example, we've got a nice uh, one-click um, Zoom join plugin here, as you can see there. Uh, payments, so yes, so CERN does handle payments for the conferences. My apologies. So CERN does handle payments for the conferences um, via, via its own uh, plugin. So you can see there we are, we can handle we can handle payments via the post finance plugin, but also for people running their own instances, um, there there is a third party integration out there for collecting payments via Stripe. And uh, PayPal also. Workflows. So when you come to CERN, you probably might go to a conference. So we have our own internal workflow for handling your um, access and uh, other stuff as well that relates to it. Ah, and also, yeah, this is a bit more into the uh, access. So yes, um, Indigo can also handle printing of your badges and also actually the access onto the uh, site. of events again this goes um, back into a little bit of zoom but also indico handles the entire life cycle conference and event so yeah so here's just a quick screenshot so you can record a event and, and um, on our side at cern um, the event will go to our uh, um, cds archive so it can be played back on demand and that's you know and that is the um, archive for our events <coughs> Okay, so you probably saw a little bit about room booking. Um, this is our internal spin-off called uh, Buratel. Um, so room booking, as it says on the tin, it's for rooms. Buratel, bureau, it's for desks. So at CERN we do provide a modified version of Indico, which only has this um, specific module, which has been uh, modified, and that is via a plugin. Again, going back to what I said earlier, you can also customize it. So here is a my screenshot of the International Linear Collider Indico instance, which is uh, hosted at CERN. And yeah, so nice and feel. And it's not just you know the front page. Um, you can also customize your meetings with the uh, same CSS rules. And also one more of the conference is for Higgs 2020. Now, um, one last thing, um, we have a nice uh, check-in application. So previously this was a React native application, um, but I think around last year we rewrote it from scratch to act as a, well, to be a PWA, a progressive, progressive web application. So basically it's like um, in any other conference, go to, you might have someone at the door scanning your badges, scanning your tickets, what have you. So this is just an application where you can smartphone um, and then yeah, it gives you the all the, function, all the functionality that you would expect from a badge scanner, so a QR code reader um, and also lets you bring up details of your of, of who's attending and you can check them in and also you know other bits and pieces on top. Uh, one last thing, I guess. Um, so, it's a very extensible event management system. It's open source, and we have a pretty nice and thriving community. So, here's a screenshot of our forums. 
you know, uh, everyone is welcome. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, I'll oh, be sure to follow us as a shout out, I guess. But yeah, that's all. Thank you. So, uh, should repeat the question, right? Yeah, so the question is whether we have some sort of backend for budgeting to uh, kind of uh, budget d different aspects of the, of the conference. And the answer is uh, no. I mean, you have a customizable registration form where you can kind of um, assign uh, prices to, to items. I don't know if that's what you need. Then, yeah, in terms of then doing you know, financial data analysis and so on, then we don't have anything like that, but yeah, but can extract everything basically to Excel and do that stuff uh, on, uh, on a spreadsheet or, yeah. Okay, another question. Um, I think there is some space for integration with uh, GIAT or uh, GCMeet or VivoVap for uh, conferencing. And um, is there a way to manage uh, Wi-Fi temporary password distribution for uh, you repeat the question. Could you repeat the question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to repeat the question. Well, uh, yeah. So the question is, uh, if, if there is some sort of way to distribute uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, passwords to, to participants, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Wi-Fi passwords are tokens for social events. Uh, not built in, but I c you could probably implement it through a plugin, right? Uh, yeah. That could be. Uh, I mean, this, I mean, this full functionality would be plugin-based, so, yeah, you probably would have to write something yourself or probably hire someone to write it. I'm sorry? Neither, not for tokens and not for Wi-Fi passwords. You have to do plugins. Yeah, yeah, no, there's nothing built in for that, no. Yep. Yes? Is there, um, is there time of the attendance? So the question is whether the, the time of attendance per participant is um, is, is registered. Uh, well, there, uh, not the attendance because I th think we don't have any mechanism like actually to have people say, you know, I'm attending now this talk and so on. But uh, we have the check-in time, yeah, the, the app that um, uh, that Dom uh, presented before. That one, yeah, if you check a person in, the, the, the time is registered and you have like a log of who, who checked in at the, at the, at the event. But that's more for kind of the reception part of the event, like to, to give maybe the... Yeah. There is no checkout, only, only check-in. Only check-in, yeah. So it's like uh, Hotel California, if you want. <laughs> 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 yes? Uh, are there plans to have like a uh, progressive web app for participants of conference, not for the organizers, for example, to see the schedule, what is happening, maybe some updates on that? So the question is whether there are plans for a PWA which targets uh, the participant side of the of, of the of the event, not so much the organization like here. The the answer is yes. Um, we we are planning on getting started still this year. Um, there are some funding uh, issues to be addressed, as you guys probably know very well, is uh, often the case. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's on the plan for this year. Yes. Um, what priority has accessibility in the UI as you showed? That's a very good question. Um, so in terms, of in terms of accessibility in the, the <laughs> in terms of accessibility in the UI, um, currently Indico is currently going through a phase where um, we have, in collaboration with the UN, um, there, there's basically a we have uh, the UN has hired a developer to contribute back to Indico some improvements to the accessibility. Um, and that's about it. So it is a thing which is, you know, it's a work in progress at the moment, and there are some features out there already um, which are going to be released soon, or they are already available in one of the releases. Yeah, uh, well, and there's, it's already, uh, many of those have already been merged into our main branch, and um, 
will be included in the next uh, release. But yeah, the, there's, there's a lot of work which is currently being done in making sure that we pass the uh, WCAG. Uh, uh, yeah. That's yes? What's about uh, uh, developer documentation? Is it well documented so people can uh, kind of easily access and contribute to the project, or it's kind of more? Uh, so regarding your question on the developer documentation and how someone can contribute to it, um, yes, there is documentation out there. So on, change the slides. Yep, so if you go to getindico.io, um, we do have a couple of pages on how you can contribute back to the project. And also we've got a pretty good readme and some readme docs pages on how to contribute back. And it also covers stuff like um, how, to, how to set up your own developer instance and everything from you know um, how to probably write a half decent comment when you or, or PR. And so yeah, th there's also some API documentation, um, Sphinx documentation based on the yeah uh, uh, code documentation, and uh, it's not as complete as we'd like, but yeah, it's a work in progress. Um, any other questions? No one. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.